Good morning. On behalf of Pastor and First Lady Cook, we would like to welcome you to St. Smyrna Baptist Church. We have worship service every Sunday at 9 a.m. with Sunday school starting at 8 a.m. Bible study is held every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Feel free to join us anytime. The doors are open. Good morning. How are you this morning? How many of you believe that God is awesome? How many believe that he can move mountains and he can hide you from the rain? Do you believe that? I want to know if you really believe that. I believe that he's awesome. I know him to be a great and a mighty God. I can call on him for anything and he's there for me. He will answer. He will hear me. He truly is awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Yeah. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. He strength where I've been weak and forever he will reign. My God is awesome. Help me sing. Awesome. Hey, awesome. Uh, awesome. My God is awesome. Help me say it. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. is awesome savior of the whole world giver of salvation by his stripes i am healed ah, my god is awesome today i am forgiven his grace is why i'm living oh bless his holy name is awesome hey yeah awesome do you believe it awesome hey awesome listen my god is awesome help me say it awesome hey awesome Yes, he is. My God is awesome. Oh, awesome. Yeah, he's holy. Yes, he is. God is holy. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
morning, church. Praise God for you and your presence this morning. I cannot take enough time. I cannot express enough emphasis to just show how appreciative we are for your presence this morning and your attention during this challenging season of ministry. Certainly it is worth the mention that you are worthy of thanks and appreciation. We want to thank you for being faithful, not only to the cause of Christ, but we also want to thank you for being faithful to the mission of this ministry. Your financial support in what has truly been a difficult time has made a world of difference. Thanks to you and your support in this moment, we've been able to continue to do ministry. And so this morning, I invite you to continue to partner with us. There on your screen now are the many ways, the five ways in which you can give and help us move forward the mission of Christ on this morning. There, by way of Cash App, there, by way of the church website, there, by way of mail, there, also by way of the means listed on your screen. You can come in person. We'd love to receive your gifts this morning, and we want to say thank you, thank you, and thank you again. God bless you. To God be the glory. Lord, while you're passing through checking on us checking on people who've lost this and that and just while you're walking through Lord just don't pass us by we need you we can't make it without you pass me not oh gentle say savior hear my arms oh Let me say a verse. Let me at thy throne of mercy, Lord, find sweet relief. Kneeling, kneeling there in deep contrition. Lord, help my, help my unbelief. Oh, I am crying, Savior. Oh, Savior. Lord, heal, heal my arm. I'm going to cry. And why, why no that call calling Lord do not pass pass me by Whoa, I'm crying save Savior save Savior Lord hear my hear my humble humble cry Thou art calling, Lord, do, do not pass, do not, Lord, don't pass me by, oh, do not, Lord, don't pass, oh, do not, do not pass, do not, do not pass me by. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you now and it's to you whom we turn in this moment. Father, we thank you for being good in the midst of all things. Thank you, Father, for the promise of your word that if we keep our mind stayed on you, that you would keep us in perfect peace. And so this morning, we ask for you, God, to shift our minds and shift our hearts so that we might be in peace this morning, not as a result of our surroundings, not as a result of our expectation of how things should be, of how things should go. Uh, allow us not to rest in disappointment, but allow us to rest in knowing who you are 
So we ask now that you not only be pleased with us, but that you be glorified and that you be edified in that matchless and most marvelous name of Jesus the Christ. I do pray. Amen. Psalm 100, the 100th Psalm, if you will, the 100th Psalm. I want to consider verse 1 in this morning. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. He enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For these next few sacred moments this morning, I simply want to preach about singing when I should be Christ singing when I should be crying. I begin our time together this morning with a genuine, and I do mean genuine, confession that even as a Christian, it is difficult to maintain joy in the midst of some disappointments. I would like to suggest to us this morning that while it is difficult for us to maintain joy as Christians, that God expects each of us to have a song in the midst of all circumstances. When we consider the words of this text, when we consider the words that speak to us by way of Psalm 100, I would like to suggest, mention, or make mention, if you will, that there are many who completely attribute the creation of this psalm of ascension to David and David alone. I like this notion of thought because if there's anyone in the Bible that each of us can relate to as it relates to disappointment, surely it is David. David, it is one who had a heart to please God and to celebrate it for some of the most faithful acts and desires of reverence toward God. David is one who is responsible uh, for the creation of joy in the midst of sorrow by the gifting of music that God placed upon his very life. David is one who could dance with the best of them in celebration of not only God for who he was, what he had done, but also for what God was doing and had yet to do. It is David who we celebrate this morning, but that isn't the totality of David's story, if we are honest. It's so interesting how we can celebrate David when David is celebrating celebrating us but condemn David and ignore the trauma in the life of David as it relates to appreciating the service of David I'm trying to suggest this morning that we are incapable of appreciating the words the work the war and the worship of David without considering the wrecks and the wrongdoings of David this morning uh, I need you to pump the brakes of judgment, if you will. This does not come from a movement of judgment, not a mention of judgment, but from a place of perspective uh, on this morning. Even with a heart to please God, you will still experience trauma, doubt, exclusion, discouragement, envy, and jealousy before you are even acknowledged in the the light that God has for you. I'd like to remind us and inform others that there are so many people who expect the universal testimony of the believer to be, I'm saved, sanctified, and happy in Jesus all day 
every day. Peace up, a town down, twenty four seven, from the licket to the splicket. But David is proof to the world this morning that being chosen by God does not make us exempt from struggle. I'd like to remind you that it was David who experienced daily trauma from his brothers who treated him like the weak link. It was David's brothers who embarrassed him in front of the very soldiers he would soon lead himself. It was David who was excluded by his own father when the prophet came to their home to anoint the next king of Israel. It was David who experienced the very man he adored and thanked God for King Saul, the one who should have been helping him. David who experienced him determined to destroy him. There's someone watching this morning that can take the mic from me and testify with your own life preacher. My name may not be David. My life may not be written on the pages of the psalm this morning but I've got my own story to tell. My own family never believed in me. My own friends never helped me but always self-serve to my detriment. The very people who should have helped me dug ditches for me and in the midst of all that I still had to find my way to church on Sunday morning. I still had to find my favorite song to sing. I still had to find my way to an active ministry to participate. I still had to find my way to a cause worthy of my sacrificial giving. There's someone who's watching right now who is screaming at the screen or the monitor back at me so that you can hear being saved has not made me exempt from adversity. I, like David, have made mistakes, but you don't know my story. I've had to find purpose in the midst of mess. I've had to find some purpose in the midst of self-created messes, but many by the design of my enemy. But you know what? The, you know the attacks are from the enemy when they form, but they do not prosper. I think I'll say that one more time for the people watching in the bathroom. I say you know that the weapons are from the enemy when the attacks form, but they do not prosper. Uh, when they lie, but you keep your job. When they spread rumors without cause, but you maintain favor with the godly. When they dig ditches, but God, he like would he walks you around their ditches like he would a helpless sheep blindly. What I'm trying to say this morning is if you expect to always have a song because the environment around you is peaceful, because the environment around you is favorable, because the environment around you is desirable, you should pick up the phone and call Cook Brothers and die right now. But there's a group of believers who can testify with me. I'm saved and sanctified, but I still have financial difficulties. My children still get on my nerves. I am sometimes my own worst enemy. Uh, where are the people that can testify? I'm saved, but I still get sick. People still talk about me. People still scandalize my name. While it hasn't been easy in the midst of all that, I'd like to suggest to you, I've still maintained my song. So here it is this morning. On behalf of the church universal, the Lord has inspired me to share with you how and why we sing when we should be crying. Someone watching is saying, how can I sing when voter suppression is still happening in 2020? People all over polls and precincts waited three and four hours in line with new machines that were supposed to make the process more efficient and better. They've been doing voter suppression practices like this for years and nothing has changed. How can I sing when a pandemic is running rampant? But we are still arguing over whether or not to pile on top of each other on Sunday morning in church. 
<laughs> How can I sing when it took another man to yell? I can't breathe for the world to finally listen, and we aren't so sure that they're really listening yet. <laughs> well, my brother and my sister, God, by way of David, inspired me to share with each of us this morning a few reasons we are still singing and praising. The psalmist says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Uh, I know there are some religions and some aspects of our own that require a solemn demeanor, low tones and, and appropriate dim lighting, but but here the psalmist exhorts each reader to, or hearer to joyfully make noise to not just any Lord, but the Lord. In other words, it was not an optional request, but a necessary demand. I think I'll say that again. It was not an optional request, but it was a necessary demand. Where are the Christians honest enough to testify? Sometimes I have to make myself. Praise his name. What do you mean, preacher? Sometimes I have to remind myself how good God has been and is in my life. My grandmother would sing it this way. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. She wasn't saying that because she had forgotten what the Lord had done, but she was saying that so she could remind her soul and her inner self of how the Lord had kept her and brought her through so many things that it would make no sense for him to leave her now but look there not only does the psalmist say make a joyful noise but the psalmist says serve the Lord with gladness I like this this is my verse and come before his presence with singing uh, this is my verse because it shows the progression of my relationship with God see this song was originally derived from one of the earliest psalms there where the people had to come to God they were expected to come to the Lord but they had to come with the spirit of repentance because they had to come in a posture of forgiveness but here the psalmist says to the people listen I need you to come to the same one you go to when you're in trouble just like you go to him with your head bowed down I need you to go to the same lap with a joyful spirit listen let me slow it down and say it this way uh, I grew up with my grandparents and 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 let me just share this uh, growing up in my grandparents household uh, there was one thing that I hated more than anything and I used to hate more than anything when my grandmother summoned me because I was in trouble. Uh, you don't understand what I mean. There was something significant about how she called my name. There was something significant about how I walked toward her. How I went into her presence when I was in trouble. But let me just say it to you this. On the other side of that coin, that same woman, that same grandmother. I wish you could have seen my face when my grandmother called my name because I had done something good where I used to walk to her with my head bowed down my head would be up where I used to walk to her with a sense of humility and agony in my heart I'd walk to her with my chest stuck out because I knew that she was getting ready to praise me and what I'm trying to tell you is that the psalmist says if you're gonna have a song when you should be crying you've got to learn how to come to God with the right posture don't come with your head bowed down don't come dismayed and discouraged and broke from the floor up but when you come to God the psalmist says come with your best smile on your face the psalmist says come with your best song in your heart the psalmist says come with the best praise on your lips because the same one who saves you when you need mercy, the same one who forgives you when you're wrong, is the same one who wants to receive your praise. And I wonder this morning, where are the people that can testify? I'm not in church right now because I'm perfect this morning. I'm not in church right now because I've not made any mistakes. 
but I'm healed because God has been good. Uh, here it is before I hold you. Uh, uh, here it is. Look with me before I hold you. Not only does the psalmist tell us there, oh, I feel happy this morning. Not only does he tell us uh, to make a joyful noise to the Lord. Not only does he tell us to serve the Lord with gladness, but he says to us, no that the Lord is God. It is he that hath made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Uh, sometimes, church, I have to remind myself that the main reason I sing when I should be crying is because I did not create myself. <laughs> I think I'll slow that train down and say it this way. Uh, I didn't make myself. I didn't think myself here. I didn't bring myself here. My mother and my father may have participated in my arrival, but they, if the truth be told, did not create me. And I'm here to tell you if I didn't create myself, that's good news this morning because sometimes we think we have the upper hand on people because we think we know something about them or what they've done or what they are caught up in let me help each of us this morning when God created us he knew the mistakes we would make before we made them when God created us he knew the messes we would get caught up in before we got caught up in them when God created us he knew the conspiracies that would be surrounding our names before he finished forming us in our mother's bellies and might I suggest to you this morning I'm excited at the thought that this psalm might be written completely by David because God knew David was an adulterer God knew David was a liar God knew David was a murderer God knew David was prone to depression but God still called him and where are the people sitting there in your living room who can testify like me this morning I may not be perfect I may be tore up from the floor up but God knew knew what I was when he called me. God knew what I was when he made me. God knew who I was when he called me. And since he called me, I will answer this morning. But but look, here it is this morning. I like this and I think that this is evidence that it might be David because David said sheep. And I'd like to suggest this morning that the reason I keep singing is because Jesus just like a sheep only knows how to bad this morning I'm trying to teach myself each and every day to learn only how to praise I sing because I want to spend my life in a posture and a sound of praise where are the people this morning who can testify preacher I know what you mean this morning I'm trying my best to learn how to live my own life in a posture of praise that's why when I want to curse people out I find myself singing kumbaya that's why when I want to nook if you buck I find myself kneeling and praying that's the reason why I find myself like Barack and Michelle Obama hadn't been to nobody's Harvard hadn't written nobody's book but I take the high road when they go low why because I'm trying each and every day just like a sheep bass I'm trying to live my life in a posture of praise and worship listen I know there's somebody watching who says that's the main reason right now I don't want to be a Christian that's the reason why we still have to march you Christians are still comparing yourselves to sheep I'd rather be a lion I'd rather be a tiger I'd rather be a bear I'd rather be a wolf a snake or a gnat anything better than a sheep but let me tell you something this morning uh, the tiger and the lion may have teeth that are sharper than any knife the bear and the wolf may have claws uh, that can get you from any angle of the jungle uh, the snake may be able to snither faster than the sheep can run but the reason why I let the wolf
wolves talk about me is because the sheep have something that none of those animals have. The sheep doesn't have sharp teeth. The sheep doesn't have sharp fangs. The sheep doesn't have sharp claws. But one thing that a sheep has that the wolf doesn't have, that the tiger doesn't have, that the lion doesn't have, that the bear doesn't have, uh, the sheep has a shepherd. And that's the reason I let the wolves talk about me because I've got a shepherd. That's the reason I let the lions conspire and I let the snakes slither because I've got a shepherd. And where are the people that can testify with me that you thank God that you didn't create yourself? Since you didn't create yourself, you don't have to protect your reputation. Since you didn't create yourself, you don't have to protect your future. Those who dig ditches for you, those who lie on you, those who spread rumors they don't know to be true, they don't have to deal with you, but they've got to deal with the shepherd. I don't know where you're watching from. You ought to take your hand, put it over your own heart, speak to your enemies, wherever they may be, and say, be careful how you talk about me. Be careful how you dig ditches with me. You don't have to deal with me, but I've got a shepherd. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is. I'm almost done. Thank God I've got a shepherd. Uh, my soul is so happy. Here it is. I want to holler one last time. And I promise now, sure enough, I'm finished right here. Verse 4, there it is. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Uh, and into his courts with praise. Might even drop it a key or two here. I feel good. But the text says, be thankful unto him and bless his name i'm done right there because this is very important uh, the last reason i share with you beloved this morning as a purpose for the continuation of our song why we ought to sing and why we sing when we should be crying it's very simple and unless you get it you won't get it but it's on the strength of his name uh, what do you mean preacher uh, the reason why you sing uh, when you should be crying is on the strength of his name church the other day I was at home running my newfound school called daddy cook's daycare and as they were having recess in the living room toys were everywhere I mean I wish you could have seen it couldn't walk anywhere Legos everywhere dolls everywhere uh, all manner of things just all over the floor and uh, while the boys were still in there playing I told Ivory Go in there and tell your brothers, start cleaning up, because after that, it's time to continue studies. We got to go back to class. Church, I went outside, did a few errands in the yard, and when I came back in, I was so upset because everything that I had seen before I went outside, it was still on the floor. All of the Legos, all of the cars, all of the Hot Wheels, all of the dolls, all of the clothes, they were still there in the floor and and I got mad I got upset but uh, church before I could even bring myself to confront the boys uh, the Lord paused me and the Lord said do a little investigation so church I I called the perfect one to my presence and I said ivory come here sweetheart and ivory came running to me and I said to ivory did you tell your brothers what I told you to tell them about cleaning the floor. And Ivory said to me, yes, Daddy, with the most beautiful smile on her face, Daddy, I told them what you told me to tell them. I said, I know, baby, I'm sure you did, but Ivory, tell me exactly what you told your brothers. And Ivory said to me, Daddy, I told Marcus and Theodore, I told them to clean up this mess because it was time for us to go back to studies. With a smile on my face, I looked down at her, and I understood then. I think I'll stay where I'm at now. I understood then uh, that Ivory did not understand what I was saying to her. Uh, so with a smile on my face, I said to Ivory, 
Sweetheart, what I want you to do now, it feels real good. What I want you to do now, I want you to go back where your brothers are. And I want you to tell your brothers that daddy said it's time to clean up these toys and it's time to clean up this mess because daddy is ready for us to resume studies. <laughs> and I'm trying to tell you that when Ivory left my presence, uh, I followed her to the edge of the hallway where I could hear her, but I could not see her this morning. <laughs> And I want you to know that when Ivory got in the room where her brothers were, they were still playing with their Legos on the floor. The PlayStation was still going on the television. And Ivory came in the room where they were and she made a special announcement. Ivory said to her brothers with a voice of confidence, she said to her brothers with the voice of authority, boys, daddy told me to tell y'all right now, it's time, it's time to clean up this mess. And with a smile on my face, I looked in the room. The PlayStation was turned off. The Legos were being picked up. The cars were being put in their box. And I smiled and I thought to myself, as the Lord began to talk, there's something not about what's being said. There's something not about how it's being said. But there's something powerful about who said it this morning. And I'm here to testify, just like to Marcus Theodore and my precious ivory. It does not matter what you say about me. It does not matter what you think about me. As long as my daddy tells me to sing, I'll sing my song. As long as my daddy wakes me up in the morning, I'll testify for God. I'll live and for God. I'll die this morning. Is there anybody here that can testify? If God be for me, he's more than the world against me this morning. That's the reason I keep on singing my song. That's the reason I keep on praying my prayer. That's the reason I keep on preaching my sermon. No weapon, I think I'll say it again. No, no weapon formed against me shall be able be able be able to prosper it did not say that they would not form it did not say that they would not hurt but the bible says that they will not prosper yeah come the hell of high water i still got a song i still gotta praise yeah my soul is happy yeah 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 can i give you three reasons why you ought to keep on singing reason number one he woke you up early this morning yes reason number two why you ought to keep on singing he woke you up early, early this morning my soul is happy reason number three 
why you ought to keep on singing. He woke you up early, early this morning. Shout yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know where you are, but there's someone who can testify. Preacher, I've been serving the Lord, but it's been difficult. Preacher, I've been faithful to the cause, but people have no idea how challenging it has been. I've tried my, my best to, to give God my best, but people just wouldn't know just how difficult it is to maintain joy. That person that feels that way this morning, let me remind you by way of the text and by way of personal testimony and experience that even in the midst of sadness, we can still have a song when we should be crying. Even in the midst of heartache, even in the midst of disappointment, there's still an opportunity for us to experience the Lord. I wish I could tell you this morning that the moment you make Christ the head of your life, that everything is perfect. I wish I could tell you that you never get sick. I wish I could tell you that you never experience discomfort in life. I wish I could tell you that people would never talk about you. I wish I could tell you that you never experience lie and scandal. But listen, the truth of the matter is even as believers, even as people striving to please God, life is going to be challenging. I don't know where you are this morning. But wherever you are, there's truly no need to worry about what the night is going to bring. Why is that? Well, it's going to be all over. What do you mean it's going to be all over in the morning? I'm not talking about when you, when you die, when you go home to be with the Lord. That's not what I'm talking about. But what I'm talking about is when you, when you like the psalmist suggests to us, when you believe that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm trying to tell you this morning that God, God, I'm trying to tell you this morning that God is with you. Wherever you are, if the Lord is speaking to you and if the Lord is saying to you that this moment is for you, first invitation is for salvation. First invitation is for salvation. Preacher, how do I get saved when... I can't come to the church where you are right now. If being saved was about coming to this building, we would all already be damned and on our way to hell. But thanks be to God, in order to be saved, we don't have to come to this building. But in order to be saved, you simply have to confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus was born of a virgin, that he came to this world, lived in a human form, that he died for our sins on the third day that he rose and that he's coming back again and you my brother you my sister are saved preacher I don't understand any of that that you just said all you need to know this morning is that I want to do better I want to live better but I can't do it on my own if that's you this morning Jesus is the answer how is Jesus the answer by committing and submitting to a way of life that's how you allow Jesus to lead you secondly or perhaps you're watching and the Lord has said to you, listen, you need a good church home. I can't think of a better church home than St. Smyrna. Will you write to us? Will you message us? And let us know that you're making that decision. If that's you, will you do that now? In the morning, morning, it'll be all over. In the morning, ain't no need, ain't no need to worry what tonight is going to bring. <clears throat> It'll be all over in the morning. Certainly want to take a moment this morning to thank God for each of our graduates and all that God is doing in your life. 
we certainly pause to join with your families, your educational communities, to acknowledge the marvelous and hard work that you have endured to get you to this point. Certainly, we thank God for your futures and pray God's speed to you as you endeavor to do great things. God bless you. We certainly want to take a moment this morning to acknowledge the awesome work and service of our ushers. Certainly our ministry would not be what it is, nor would we be who we are without our marvelous ushers. This month is set aside to celebrate the work of our ushers and our greeters. And so the rest of this month, I ask each of you to prepare your hearts and your minds to help me celebrate each and every one of our marvelous ushers. More information is coming in the communicator for how each of us can be a part of this month's celebration of each of our ushers. God bless you. Good morning, St. Smyrna family and friends and all who tuned in this morning. Thank you once again for watching and for being with us in worship today. I pray that it blessed you. Um, I know that this time is difficult for everybody, but just try to get outdoors, do something fun with your family, enjoy this time with your family and those you love. Um, take care of yourselves and each other. We love and we miss you so very much.